Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I trust everybody had a Merry Christmas. Um, we certainly did here and our families as well. Um, so um, we had a, a sticker delivery. This is from uh, DJ over at Foxburg Fabric Cobbling. Uh, he's got a good channel. You definitely want to check him out. He's got some uh, quite a collection of machines. He makes a lot of nice finds. Um, I'll put a link down below. Uh, if you haven't checked out his channel, definitely check it out. Uh, so we're working on, and I've been working on, uh, building some miter gauges for the carbide tool grinder. Um, uh, I was hoping to get this out a lot sooner. We keep getting interrupted. It had a lot of things happening. Busy work, busy home stuff going on, car repairs and so forth. So um, yeah, I just haven't had a lot of time. But finally got a little break in the action. So I want to get this project wrapped up. Uh, it's going to be two parts. This is going to be part one. So let's get into it. Alright, this may end up as a complete fail, but I'm going to try to use the center drill as an engraving tool. So, no promises here. The first thing I'm going to do is, uh, we're we'll just do it dry here, and we're going to set up a stop. Okay, let's see what we got. Alright, here we go, quarter inch end mill. Okay, we're working on cutting the final radius here. So I've repositioned this clamp. I got just enough room to get by it. I think we'll do a partial cut first, come back and then we'll do a full cut. And then once we get past this clamp, I'm gonna move the clamp over and reclamp so we don't lose our hold down before we do the final pass.
Okay, I had to make an engineering change. I think we're going to be all right. Let's see what happens. Do a little deburring. Well, we got the rotary table set up. I want to make a few more of these miter gauges for different setups. So, I mean, this will cover most things, but when you're trying to do a a side cut, a real shallow side cut like that. You know, kind of this, this gauge is pretty limited. Plus, with the pivot being here in the center, you know, you're going to be way away from the uh, from the cutting wheel. So I want to make another one that will set up closer in. Probably do the same thing. Put the uh, put a, a pivot hole here. But I'm going to make the, the radius slots, they'll, they'll, they're going to look a little different because they're going to be based off a different location. So this is probably going to be a little wider also. So let me cut some material and uh, see how it's going to look. This is what I'm, what I'm using. Just some, just some channel aluminum and we'll just, we'll just cut it out of that. Just squaring the ends of our material off. I just took a piece of that channel and split it down the middle. So we'll just uh, we'll just square it off here and try to do it in one shot. So this is what happens when you're not paying attention. <laughs> I had one piece of uh, material flipped one way and one the other way, but it still worked fine. Just uh, <laughs> funny. I didn't even notice that. A little bit of a sketchy setup. So I got two big parallels and there's another thin parallel sitting on top of them and then we've got another parallel here and another one here because the, the uh, length of the leg of these uh, angle pieces it's not the same so I had to put pressure here to lock it into the vise so well, let's just hope it holds um, if we uh, show up at the bench with two good pieces then we know it did if they're broken, then we know it didn't. Okay, here's the plan, guys. So these miter gauges are going to be for... And I, I'm handheld here, so sorry about that. Uh, but these miter gauges are going to be for, for grinding shallow angles. So they're going to look a little different than your typical miter gauge. So you can see I already laid out where I want the center hole and how I want the arc to be. I'm going to have one on each end, and depending on whether you're um, on one side of the machine or the other side, you'll, get, you'll probably have a situation where I need to flip the whole thing around. That's why I'm going to do two different arcs here. Um, hold on one second. Okay, so and I, I don't want to I don't want to break out of the edge here. So what I'm doing, I just took a nut. These are going to be quarter inch slots. So I just took a nut and use that to eyeball how far I want to mill these slots, okay? And then I'm going to make two of these since I have plenty of material. So, and the only difference between them is the pivot hole is a, is a different dimension from the fence. So I made this one a little longer, it's a little wider piece of material. So my theory is if, you, if you're going to grind a real thin uh, tool bit, I'll get you guys in frame here, real real thin uh, piece of tool steel that you can get in closer with the fence with a different pivot point. Alright, so uh, 
time to go set up in the rotary table to uh, to make these and, and I got to drill this also on both of them quarter inch all right let's go do that That's probably good enough for overdoing it. See if I can get it closer. I think what you see there is just the roughness of the bore. All right, we're going to call that good. Let's lock everything down. All right, good enough. Okay guys, um, I got our workpiece centered up on our uh, pivot hole here. Let's just turn the mill off here. I mean it's probably a couple thousandths out, but for what this is, it's not worth messing with. Okay? <laughs> so what we're gonna do, we're gonna I got a center cutting quarter inch end mill here. We're gonna use the end mill, we'll go ahead and drill our punch our center hole with the end mill and then we'll step over and we're just going to do this by eye. I've got some witness marks here, our starting and stopping point to cut our radius. We'll do both sides and switch to the next piece. I think for what this is that's going to be good enough. <laughs> the last one I went ahead and dialed in you know our back fence here to make sure it was perfectly you know, square with the mill table. Um, but really not necessary if we can just go off of our off of our witness marks here okay let me get this stuck in there and we'll go for it okay almost bozoed the whole thing here <laughs> so the reason last time we indicated our fence in to square it up is because we put our scribe marks in for our angle all right do we want to do that on this one uh, let me think about this for a minute, and uh, I'll let you know. All right, I thought about this for a minute, and my conclusion is the um, scribe marks aren't going to be that accurate anyways, so we're just going to go for it, because you really need to have a protractor to set this properly when you're, when you're setting up to do your grind. So that's our story, and we're sticking to it. All right, here we go. Let me bring the table. Well, no, I'm just gonna, just gonna go for it. Just gonna go until we see sawdust. Alright, that looks pretty good. I think I'm going to do this in more than one pass. Alright, here we go. I'm just going to peck away at it here. Okay, halfway there. Okay, we're set up on the other side. A little tricky since I don't have a DRO, I had to compensate for backlash, um, which luckily there's not a lot in the x-axis on this machine. It's only about four thousandths. So I think we're, we're good. So here we go.
Okay, we got these cleaned up. So we had a little bozo incident. Our uh, our hold down clamps were not holding, and the, these both of these ended up slipping a little bit. And I didn't notice that till right toward the end. So our slots are a little ragged. I mean, we didn't slip much, but yeah, I tried to had to do a little hand filing and sanding to try to clean them up a little bit um, I mean they're still gonna work fine it's just they're not as pretty as they could be so anyways it is what it is um, so our next step is on our key stock here we're gonna have to drill and tap for the studs so we're just gonna make some little quarter 28 studs that'll be um, threaded in and probably Loctited. At least the center one will be Loctited. The end ones, the way these are, are set up, depending on which way you're swinging the miter, you may have to take out the opposite stud to, to get the full travel. It just is what it is. Um, I guess I probably, if I used a bigger piece, probably could have avoided that. I still might make one more. We'll see how it goes. See how how uh, how often we need to flop the uh, the studs, and then we got to make some thumb uh, some thumb nuts. Okay, we'll probably make a few extras, so that'll be uh, tomorrow or next episode. Uh, pretty much done for today. So we had a little bit of a bozo incident. I was just doing some test fitting after we uh, drilled and tapped our guide keys and just going to put them together to see how everything fit and our hole that we drilled is a little too small same thing with our uh, with our slot so what happened I grabbed a, what I thought was a, you know, a quarter inch end mill, and it was a quarter inch end mill, but it had been reground. So it didn't, of course, it didn't drill or create a quarter inch hole or slot. <laughs> so now that I've put the rotary table away and everything's cleaned up, uh, I got to figure out what I want to do. So. I think what I'm going to do first is just uh, just go ahead and drill this out to quarter quarter inch like it should be, and then I might just take some emery and just uh, work this a little bit, see if if it will provide enough clearance because it's all it's almost there. This is a uh, a quarter twenty eight. Um, it's actually a set screw, but I'm going to I'm going to use it for our studs, and I mean it almost goes through, so. If I can just clean it up, in fact, it'll, it'll work a little bit if you get in there just right. If I can just clean it up, I think we'll be fine. 